It's time for round two of the Bank Box Battle Series with pennies. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure, and that's right, it's time for round two of this Penny Box Battle Series. And you will recall, 12 and a half points for Wells Fargo in the first round, 18 and a half for Chase, and 21 and a half for B of A. Last series, third place finisher kicks us off with a W. Still, it's early. One out of the nine boxes done. This is box number two. We're going to kick it off with Chase because the box is different than the other two. And then we'll go to B of A because the box is different than the other two. And then finally we'll go to Wells Fargo because its box is different than the other two. Just kidding. Bottom line is we're going to kick it off with Chase because I haven't hunted a Chase box of pennies in quite some time and I just feel like doing it. Now, the B of A box has the holes in the bottom. It's all they were circulated. We'll open that when we get to it. Wells Fargo, I cracked the top. Definitely circulated. Didn't check the other side for enders yet. Chase cracked it open. Saw that it was circulated by only pulling one roll out. You can see right there. So we don't know what enders we really have, and we don't know if we have anything awesome. But that's what makes coin roll hunting so dang fun. All right, enough chit chat. We got to skit scat and start hunting. We've hunted five rolls so far and found nothing, but grabbed roll number six. And we've got a wheat penny ender. So that's a good sign. Let's see what year it is. The wheat penny ender, 57D. It's one of the newest ones, but it gets us on the board. Roll 18, still stuck on one wheat penny, but we did find a young head. 1958, we'll take it. We're on roll number 23, and I'm finally gonna get a second wheat penny right here. Feels good to see another one. It's another 57D though. So a little nervous about this box. That's only two after 23 rolls. Hopefully it heats up. Roll 25, another wheat penny and I saw it facing me. 1951 Philadelphia. All right, wheat penny number three. Roll 35 and we're gonna have our fourth wheat penny right here. It's a 1946 Philadelphia. Oldest of the box. Roll 41, and we're gonna get our oldest wheat penny of the box. I already saw it facing me, a 1942D. Roll 43 is gonna yield wheat penny number six for the box, half a dozen. It's a common 44, but we'll take it. So we finished that box of Chase pennies, and you know what? Only six Wheaties. Oldest wheat penny of the box, didn't even crack below 1940. It was a 1942 Denver. We also found one young head, 459s, including this beautiful toner. I really like how it looks. It's in pretty good shape too. We also got 169S and one fairly nice 1968 Denver. On top of that, I'm not keeping them, but I wanted to show you, I did find three 2019Ds. First ones I have found in circulation, so they're out there now. Probably not gonna score a lot of points on the board with this many finds, so I'm pretty sure Wells Fargo and B of A can pass up Chase. It was the second most points last round, but this round, it might come in last. All right, let's get to Wells Fargo next. So we could be on a good box. I've noticed there's several enders that look pretty nice, and I've already found this beautiful 1963. And there's a lot of great looking 78 through 82s that I'm not keeping. But my point to this is I just opened a roll and spilled it out by mistake. And look what I see laying here. Now it's probably going to be in the 50s. But that is a beautiful, beautiful wheat penny. And it's a 57P. I don't want to mess with it too much. So, yeah, a couple of ding marks, of course, from circulation, but that is a stunner. And like I've always said, if I could find Wheaties like this versus old beat up ones, I'd take them like that all day, even if they're the 40s or 50s. So I'm going to go through this roll and continue the hunt, see if I see anything else. But uh, if I'm going to start seeing pennies like these and even this beautiful ender there, 
got some toning, but you can see some of the original luster. We're going to be in for a good hunt. Same spill on the bottom as I clear them away. Thought it was copper. It was, but it's a 48 Philadelphia. So two Wheaties in that roll and one's a beauty. All right, let's get those coppers in the jar and pull another roll. Very next roll, roll number seven. We're about a third of the way in and I see the back of a wheat scent. What do we got here? A 1941. They're getting older. I like it. Roll number nine. Wheat penny number four. 1944. Roll number 11. And we're going to have our fifth wheat penny. So it feels good finding wheat pennies every other roll right now. This one's a 55 Denver. Laid out roll 17. I caught something wheat scent like in the back. 51 Denver. Wheat penny number six. We're on roll 23. I see the back of a wheat penny. And when I slid it down, I think that's a 42D over there. It is. So we've got a 42D. Pretty toasty. Or is that a 42S? No, it's a D. 19, 42D. We'll just double check it. Yep. So 42D, second oldest of the box. And then what is this one going to be right here? It's also got the same kind of patina or damage to it. And it's a 44D. Figured it was around the same year. They both have a similar damage look to them. Still, eight wheat pennies now, 23 rolls. Roll 24, same thing. Another nice mid-70s or 60s coin, but I see a wheat penny as well. 55D again. Wheat penny number nine. So as hot as this box was in the first 24 rolls, when we had nine wheat pennies, we're on roll 50. I was thinking to myself, have I ever gone 26 rolls without a wheat penny? I don't think I have. I think I've started a box with 20 on roll 23 when I got my first. But to end a box with 26 rolls without a wheat penny would have been disgusting. <sighs> that being said, I just laid out roll 50 and we're going to get at least one in this roll to make our 10th wheat penny of the box finally. It's just a 56. But I've been on a mission thinking I was going to find the 10th one. Any roll after 24. Took me 26 rolls. I'll finish hunting this roll and see if we find anything else. And then I'll give you a wrap up. Oh, the irony. Same roll like the sixth penny down is another wheat penny. And it's a 46D. So not old again. But two in that roll. We now have 11. And since I found two... Might as well keep you around just in case there's a third. And since I'm filming, you know there won't be. All right, let me finish this up and give you a wrap up. So we finished that box of Wells Fargo pennies and you know what? We did get 11 for the box. That's a really good a number for me to find. I've been finding six to eight lately. It's been slowing down. So to get 11, I'm happy with but we had nine after 24 rolls and only got two in the 50th roll to make 11. Also of note, the oldest one was a 1941 and we found that early on. So nothing that spectacular, except for I will say that this 1957 Philadelphia is in beautiful shape and I'm happy with that find. We also found 459s and a 69S that somebody tried to alter the word trust on. You can see... It's been pushed around a little bit. It's not the DDO. It's just postman damage. And then after all of the nicer coins I found, I culled them down. And I think I'm just going to keep these three. A 62D, 63P, and a 64D. That box definitely beat the chase box, for sure, on fines. Now it's time to see if B of A, which I have not opened yet, because I can see from the holes in the bottom we circulated, can do any better. Let me get this cleared away, and then we'll get this box open. And we'll check for enders. Let's go ahead and crack open this box and see if we have anything worth talking about. I don't see anything worth talking about. The good news is I do see some copper. So that being said, let's kick it off. Roll number 
Hole number two of the B of A box, and we're going to have our first wheat penny already. And this one is a 1952 out of Denver. Same roll. Kind of a clean one, I guess. A 55D, just a few pennies later. Roll six, starting off like last box. We found our third wheat penny already. This one's a 53S, I believe. It is a 53S. So three wheat pennies all in the 50s, but all in the first six rolls, too. Roll number nine, wheat penny number four already. Get to reveal it. Another 50s. 52, is that an S as well? No, it's just a damaged D. All right, four in the 50s. They're getting older now. Can we get some 40s or 30s? Same roll, another 50s weedy, 53S. And that is number five already for the box. And we're not even through the first 10 rolls. Roll number 27, and I wasn't expecting this one towards the back of the roll, but we got a wheat penny, and it's a 1940 out of Denver. Roll 28, about the fifth penny in. It's facing me. Got a 44S. So that's two from the 40s real quick, and that now makes seven for the box. Roll 29, we're going to have wheat penny number eight. It's another 50s, last year wheat penny, 1958 Denver. Roll 33, gonna have another wheat penny. It was already facing me and it's the oldest of the box. Got our first pre 40s, a 1936 Philadelphia. And since it is a 36, you always wanna be checking those for the double die obverse. And you'll see it on the nine, three and six most prevalent, but we got some oddities right here, but I think that's just going to be some ding marks. I'm going to take a look at it at some closer magnification just to make sure, but it looks like it's just a regular 1936 at first glance. Roll 34. We've got another wheat penny. Slid it down and I exposed the 44 Denver, and that's wheat penny number 10 already. So we hit 10 a little bit earlier on this box because we had that run of no wheaties in the last box for like 20-something rolls. Good news is we do have 16 rolls left. We're at double digits, we've got a pre-40s, and we've got more to hunt. Roll number 42, we're gonna have another wheat penny here and it's number 11 of the box. And I think it's a 46. It is, might have a mint mark too, I'm not quite sure. Looked like it might have been a 46D, but either way, might just be a 46 as well. We'll add it to the collection. Roll 45. We're going to have a dozen wheat pennies here because this is a 1951 out of Denver. We couldn't squeeze a baker's dozen out of the B of A box, but we did get 12 wheat pennies. Oldest of the box, we did find one in the 30s in 1936. Not the DDO. Had to make sure. We also found 359s, but that's it. On top of that, I found a pretty nice 1982 zinc scent out of Denver. Might upgrade in my album. I know it's not the greatest, but the one on my album is not very good either. And then we did find, uh, what, five 2019s. So, had to count those. I'll be tossing them back. I already checked them for any errors or varieties. Nothing on there. It's going to be a tight race between uh, B of A and Wells. We'll have to see who wins this round once I get them in the stat sheet. Well, here we have it. Wells Fargo took round two, 25 points. Got help from the AU type coins because I do give a little bit of extra points if they're in nice shape. Chase Bank, 14, another bad box. And B of A, 21, another average box for them. So at the end of the first two rounds, B of A still holding on at 21.3. Wells Fargo made it some ground now at 18.8. And Chase is in last at 16.3 again. We're only two of the 10 boxes in with a new scoring sheet. And of course, all it takes is a great find or an Indian head in one of my boxes. And that's going to help out a lot. Hopefully you're enjoying my Bank Box Battle Series with Pennies. This was round two of Series 2. If you are, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.